you're listening to High Frequency Healing on the Super Power Up Podcast, the show that explores the awakening of superpowers through higher dimensional healing. Hello, this is Angela Maria, one of the Super Power Up hosts, and you are listening to High Frequency Healing Show, Awakening Superpowers Through Higher Dimension Healing. The only difference between where you are to where you want to be is the actions you take here and now to heal your life. So let's take a deep breath and be here and now. I invite you to enjoy this time together. So here we go. Please let's welcome Alana Pratt to my show today. We will be talking about ready to overcome the breakup. She is an intimacy expert, is a global media personality and go-to authority for those who have suffered heartbreak and are ready to live unapologetically and attract an open-hearted, ideal relationship. Her vulnerability and courage landed her a featured weekly column on the Good Man Project, featured as an icon of influence and as a guest expert on many recognized TV programs and magazines. This Ivy League grad is the author of four books and hosts the LG podcast Intimate Conversation, where listeners learn how to find the relationship they deserve. Alana supports nonprofits like Rise of the Butterfly to end human trafficking while offering private coaching and retreats so that her clients have a thriving intimate relationship with themselves first, which naturally attracts and enhance their ideal partnership. Join me to welcome Alana to my show. Welcome, Alana. Thank you for being here. Oh, Angela Maria, my pleasure. Where is your very delicious accent from? I- I'm probably from Colombia. I'm a Colombia. Yes. <laughs> I had a feeling, but I wasn't going to assume. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Alana, just let's start this and tell us what's your healing superpower. Mm. I somehow am able to make people feel safe and seen and understood, definitely in person, definitely through Zoom on our calls. And unbeknownst to me, I can make them feel like that on even the the videos on the YouTube channel. I'll have somebody from across the world say that they saw a video and I was speaking right to them and it touched them. And so I'm so grateful that my love for people can extend through technology. Yeah, through video. Mm. That's a very powerful superpower, Mm. especially for what you do to the world. Hmm. Would you please take us back to your early years and name one memorable life lesson that is useful for you today? Mm. I'd say the most memorable moment that was very transformational for me growing up was when my best friend was supposed to come over for the weekend, two of them, um, uh, a a boy and a girl, and uh, the girl came down the steps to tell me that James was dead. And they played jokes on me all the time. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then I saw her parents walk up behind her, just stone cold faces. And I knew it was true. And at that point, Angela Maria, my cat hadn't even died. My grandmothers hadn't died. Like nobody died. And it was like my best buddy. And it was an awful moment where it's one of those choice point more moments. You don't know how you're going to react or respond to, to devastating news. But I remember like running down the scent. We l- had a cabin at the lake and we were right beside the freeway. It was like a two lane highway. And I'm, I remember running down the center aisle or center yellow line screaming, no. And if I could just keep st- screaming, no, long enough, it wouldn't be true. And I could hear cars screeching. And eventually my dad came walking down the center line of the highway and he grabbed my shoulders and he said, look, If you're never going to see him again, let's get off. Let's kill ourselves now. I don't want to play. But what I believe is that we live forever and that you will see your friend again. 
And I never knew my dad was spiritual. He was kind of a drunk and a drug addict growing up. It was, it was not the most, he wasn't really that safe rock for me growing up. But in that moment, his true nature showed through and he really put me on the spiritual path to consider a reality that I'd never considered. And that evening, my friends had taken me to ride bicycles down at the provincial park to get my mind off it. (laughs) But as we're coming back down to the lake where our cabin was, it was a beautiful night, totally clear sky, no clouds whatsoever. But there were two rainbows, Angela Maria, that were right over my cabin. And my friend who had died, James, who had died, his mother had died, you know, just 10 months prior. And I remember him saying he just didn't know how to live anymore. And there they were, the two rainbows over my cabin. He was with his mom and my dad was right. There is a life beyond this veil. There is a a spirituality, an energy, something bigger than me that I can can interact with, I can co-create with. And that to me was one of the most powerful moments to shift my life. And I chose, would I rather not know my friend and not have this pain right now? Or would I rather know my friend, have this pain, and learn to live with my heart open again, learn to trans, transmute, transform, integrate this pain into something good, like strength, like compassion, like, like a courage to say I love you when I, when I feel it, and to live fully, and to risk, and to grow. So I'm very grateful for that painful but life-defining moment. Oh. I, I, that, that story really touches me and live with your heart open again. Yes. I, I can tell for myself that if I wouldn't have been willing to live with my heart open again, I wouldn't have met and allowed my husband to come into my life when I was 42 years old. And I really thought, I wouldn't have any other chance. I was never married. I never lived with anybody before. I had a lot of relationships and they were the perfect ones for me to realize that I needed to love myself first. Thank yes. you so much for this. It's, it's, I think this is the key of this conversation. I am so excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before we move on, please tell us where can people go to find out more about you? Mm, You're so kind. Thank you. My website is probably a great place, alanapratt.com. You could also uh, type in alanapratt.com forward slash watch, and that takes you to my YouTube channel. There's over 2,000 videos there. And then third on iTunes, Intimate Conversations. That's my podcast with hundreds and hundreds of interviews over the years, really supporting people in having the relationship they deserve with themselves and with the divine and with their beloved. We've been talking with Alana Pratt about ready to overcome the breakup. When we come back from this short break, we're going to talk more about her healing superpowers. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello, everyone. This is Tonya Don Reckla, Executive Director of Superpower Experts. And we want to thank each of you for making Superpower Up the number one podcast network for personal development and spiritual growth. Because people like you have the courage to say that mindfulness, healthy living, disrupting reality, the pursuit of consciousness, responsible entrepreneurship, and radical parenting matter, we now amass over 1 million downloads monthly in more than 90 countries. Our numbers keep growing because there are far more people willing to live divergently than mass media wants to acknowledge. For you, the change makers, the light bearers, the way showers, we say thank you. If you're ready to take the next step in your evolution, go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz. And as Neva Lee Rekla, our youngest podcaster, likes to remind us, remember, we all have superpowers and we can change the world. We are back and you're listening to High Frequency Healing Show. Today, we are talking with Alana Pratt about ready to overcome the breakup. Alana, was there a burning bush moment that made your heart desire changing your path in life um, different from the one you just shared with us? Like a moment where you say, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Mm. It's such a great question. I think I've had many burning bushes. (laughs) 
<laughs> throughout the I years. love those. <laughs> um, I do remember when I, I've been married twice. And so in my early 20s, I met a very tall, dark and handsome multimillionaire guy when I was a model in Japan. And he was a like a Wall Street guy, expat. And, and we moved to, uh, from Tokyo to New York, and I started going to an Ivy League school, Columbia University. And I was just finishing one more semester of general studies just to catch up so I could begin again. I had gone to college in Canada as well. Mm-hmm. And I was so interested in looking good, doing it right, being a people pleaser, you know, I, I, I hadn't really found my voice yet, but having lived in Tokyo for four years, um, I, I had traveled around, backpacked around. I was a dancer. I was a model. I tried all these things that my parents thought were crazy. They wanted me to either take over my dad's pharmacy or, you know, be a teacher like my mom. And I knew my path was different. And so when I got to university, I gave myself permission to take all these different courses before I, I claimed my major. And it was really between anthropology and art history, both of which my husband at the time said, I'll never get a job, but I didn't care. I've, I've figured it out this far. I'll figure it out. <laughs> and as I took those two courses, I, anthropology was awesome because it sort of helped the coach in me understand different cultures, different ways of thinking, different points of view. But it wasn't until I got to art history where beauty, be- the, the expression of beauty, so inherent. Like, I don't believe it's very healthy to say I'm beautiful because that puts us into competition with others. But if you can say, I am beauty herself, there's no need for competition. You just shine as your unique self. And something that my art history, I ended up choosing that as my major. It taught me that beauty in all these different ages, all these different cultures was totally different. You know, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And that really reminded me that my point of view creates my reality. And it's been such a, a wonderful way of looking at the world, looking for the beauty in anything. I had this amazing interview on JJ Flazane's podcast where we were talking about delicious moments. And I was saying, no, 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 it's a delicious moment, even when you're in the fetal position crying mm-hmm. because you're there for yourself. You're, you're willing to be with yourself in your pain, and that's a flavor of delicious. Uh, that's a flavor of beauty. So I'd say that was a more subtle burning bush moment, but definitely uh, assured me to move on the path of, of true beauty, true deliciousness. And as I'm an intimacy expert, really intimacy first, coming home to yourself first, And then instantly when you do, you become one with the field, the universe, the divine, your higher, higher self. And then when you come from that wholeness, of course, we'd all like to be, you know, approved of what prefer, we'd prefer people like us, right? Of course, but we no longer need it when you come from this wholeness on the inside and you become far more irresistible to a a high level uh, conscious partner because you don't need them to complete you. Two whole people are coming together where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And that's, I think, really the conscious relationship we're all looking for. You said something, Alana, that it's it's one of my it's one of my motors and it's what I always bring into my mind, into my heart and my soul. And it's enjoy every moment, even in the middle of the pain and the suffering. Mm. I love the word that you just use. Just taste it delicious. Even the lemon is delicious, and it's kind of bitter and, but it's delicious. Sometimes that flavor just—I love to put lemon everywhere in my food. I just love it, and yeah. it's exactly when you're talking. It doesn't matter if sometimes those moments in life are kind of bitter, but but still find the delicious taste in that bitter because it's something else calming. And yes. that's, that's, I think that's a very important message. Do not stay there. Just, that is just a transition that you need to go through before you can create something better, something bigger. Yes, Thank you beautiful. For that reminder. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder. And also the part of intimacy, I think that's, that's a key, especially for women. Sometimes we forget about ourselves. We yeah. forget that we need to go inside and we need to connect to how I'm feeling. 
How, yeah. what, what I would like to do right now? What is that thing, that person, that activity that I really would like to do now? It's just being in, on my bed cuddling and just being there. Just do it. Mm. That is something really important, especially when we move to this next topic mm -hmm. and talking about relationships. I don't yeah. believe you can have a relationship that is healthy and satisfactory if you don't have a, a healthy and satisfactory relationship with yourself. Yes. So in your bio, you express you are an authority for those who have suffered heartbreak and are ready to live unapologetically and attract an open hearted ideal relationship. And I want my listeners to raise your hand if you have been at some point in your life in that group of people, because I need to raise my two hands, my two feet, <laughs> and even raise my body because, oh my God. Tell us more about that, Alana. Oh, you're so adorable. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Me too. Yeah. All my... All my limbs are in the air. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So the gift, as you so beautifully said, I'll sort of tie it in with the last thing you said. I didn't, when I was growing up, want to be, a, I didn't want to grow up. I didn't want to be in reality. I wanted to be in fantasy that one day there will be this, you know, prince and, and he'll swoop me off my feet and I'll be happy forevermore. And that'll be the end of everything. Mm. And, and that's, that's not reality. Reality is there's equal pain and pleasure in every moment. That's actually science. Everything is equilibrated and in perfect harmony and balance in the universe. And when it's not, it comes back into balance again. I think Mother Earth is letting us know we're not treating her well. And she's making it known with earthquakes or fires or floods or what have you. Everything is eventually going to come back into balance. And so... For me, that reality, that maturity of realizing that every relationship is going to have conflict, I didn't, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to face that. So I would stay a people pleaser. I would say yes when I meant no. I would, you know, put up with things. I would not speak my truth. I wouldn't slow down to feel my feelings. All of these behaviors because I didn't want to feel the other half of the emotions because I had labeled them as bad and wrong. You know, anger, bad, shame, bad, sadness, bad. Put on the happy face, Alana. Just be perfect and be happy all the time. And of course, that doesn't work because it's not even real and it's scientifically impossible. So if we can have a different point of view about pain, if we can see the beauty and the gift in how it grows our resilience, if we can see the beauty in sadness and learning how to hold ourselves and soothe ourselves. If we, can, if we can learn to listen to the anger and not suppress it and become depressed or project it and become a bitch, if we can just sit with that potency and listen to the message, the anger is just telling us we're out of integrity with our values. It's just telling us something's off. It's just telling us we need to take an action and make a change. It's not wrong. So when we can start to look at the feelings of breakup, you know, am I not good enough? Why did they leave me? What did I do wrong? Am I going to die alone? You know, all these, if we can just sit in the fire, sit in the dark and just hold and listen and acknowledge and validate th this other part of us as equally valid as our happy and triumphant and badass part, if we can just unconditionally love every aspect of ourself, allow every emotion on the spectrum to be equally valid to feel, we, we, we come from that grounded, centered, allowing place. We can welcome all moments. We can embrace all aspects of self. And we become more mature, more, more centered, more present. We become more wise. We become actually more irresistible because people can sense that they can't throw you off your center very easily. They can trust you. They begin to respect you. And that's how we really attract a higher level, more conscious partner by doing the work of our last breakup. So see the breakup as your greatest spiritual teacher. Sit in that fire. Go in that dark closet and find the little you who doesn't need you to fix her and change her. She just needs a hug. She just needs a hug. 
<sighs> and so we can stop all the striving and got to grow, got to be better, got to be more. Just be. We could just be. And then when we have the patience of eternity, we tend to get pretty instant results and meet somebody that's truly in alignment with our more conscious, healed self. Wow, Alana. I was trying to catch up right in every single thing because that is exactly, exactly what as human beings we need to learn to do. We were not taught to do that. Mm. We were told, don't show you're sad. Your happiness is not a guy. Just, just be strong. Somebody else will come. Don't worry about it. Stop crying. Don't give him the power just by crying. And, and just that piece. I would just keep with that piece of when you have yourself, when you embrace, when you acknowledge that those emotions after a breakup, are willing to sit there and feel in them and yeah. realize that that is a part of you. It's also part of you. As when you are happy, as when you are successful, this is also important. That it helps you to become more irresistible. Yes, and, and <laughs> I love that because it's exactly <laughs> what I have verified in my life. I remember one day after I was already living with my now husband. I told him, I said, what, what was that that you felt attracted to this teeny tiny Colombian woman who is noisy, who's extroverted, <laughs> who's always happy, who's, who's crazy, who's telling everybody love, hey, handsome, hi, beautiful. And how, what was? I, I just wanted to know. And he said something really beautiful. And I still have those words in my mind. And he said, because that makes you even more beautiful. That makes you gorgeous. And I just love that in you. And I said, oh, the big word in English that I love to say, and I'm not going to say it now, that's what it is. Yes. And I realized that I also connected to that part of me saying, this is who I am. And I really love to be like this. I never realized that was me being attractive for somebody else and yes. sometimes i just try to cover that because i said oh no with my accent oh no and then they're gonna realize i am just too crazy i am too loud and 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 maybe he doesn't like that and i was always covering those parts in me that i didn't accept in myself yes. and i thought that it wasn't they were not going to be accepted by the other person thank you so much um, Please, please, if you're listening to this podcast, go back and please play again right after Alana start answering this question because there is a lot of wisdom and a lot of manifestation power in those words. And if you really feel, this is not a question, but if you really feel that you are ready to overcome the breakup, I would just finish this interview so happy with what Alana just said. Hmm. Take notes and just think about what actions do you may need to take right now. Do you went through a breakup without not feeling the sadness and the pain? Are you convincing yourself that you're not sad and you don't have any reason to feel miserable? Please be honest to yourself because if you're expecting somebody else to be honest with you, you need to do it first to yourself. Molana, mm -hmm. you just need to write a book with those lines. This is this is pure power. Mm. Thank so, you. After all of these experiences that you have had with love and just in contact to many people that they are going through breakups and just dealing with love and dealing with not presence of love, what is love for you, Alana? Mm. <laughs> Love is, is, is home. Love for me is the way I can treat myself, uh, no matter what, how I, all the little Alanas, and just be allowing, non judgmental, listening, just be present with myself. And love is being that with others, like my son, however he is, not going quick to reaction and judgment, but just taking that beat 
And even being honest, if I'm having trouble staying present, I need a timeout. Mom needs a timeout. I'll be back in five. I love you. And like just being honest and vulnerable and then being that with my clients, being that with my staff, being that with you, Angela Maria, being, being love to me is, is, can I give myself permission to be my true self with myself and with others? That's like life force energy having its way with me and not squelching it or contracting and just surrendering, just letting life have its way with me and letting that come out with my words, my touch, my writing, my videos, my interviews. To me, that's like the most ultimate orgasmic communion (laughs) when I can have the courage to open my heart all the way and let life come through me um, for for the mystery and magic of it all. Mm. Thank you. And I, I also want to invite my listeners, our listeners, to just pause this podcast right here, right now. Pause it. Think about Alana's words. Think about your own experiences with love. And what is love for you? Because that description of love for you is exactly who you are. It's exactly what you're attracting to you. And I do believe that we need to start just going back to ourselves, stop, stop, pause, and go inside to ask the whole big question. Because whatever you feel is what you are, and that's what you project, and that's what you attract. If your meaning of love is pain, suffering, something completely opposite, start creating a new, a new meaning for love in your life. Alana, do you believe love needs to be healed? Do I believe love needs to be healed? Mm-hmm. Um, no, love love is all. Love is everything. Love is eternal and limitless. It's another word for God or home or everything or nothing to me. So there's nothing to be healed. There's perceptions to be healed. There's traumas to be healed. There's emotional triggers that make our body uh, react with certain hormones that need to be healed, transformed, transcended. There's definitely brain science that shows that when we react and where we haven't processed an event, it's been unprocessed or unintegrated, that it sends us into fight or flight or freeze. Um, And then we react and we don't make choices aligned with our heart and soul. So all of that needs to be healed, but it's just a return to what was already there all along, which is truth or love or oneness. To me, that's all the same word. There are fears, ideas that need to be healed. But love is already healed itself. Love is what heals. Yes. So go deeper into those words. Go go deep into yourself and connect to your own fears. What are you thinking? What are you doing? What are you saying? Alana, I guess that you have had tons of opportunities to guide people through all of these paths to go to themselves and they'll be able to create the love out there. Do you have any situation, any of those uh, opportunities with somebody that you just keep in your heart and say, this, this example itself, this experience with this person reminds me every day that this is my path. Like one of those experiences with a client where you feel, wow, yes, yes, yes to what I'm doing, yes to my mission in life. Mm. That you may share with us, of course. I'm so blessed I have so many of those. So many of my clients are thriving. Some have been in my private coaching and retreats for years. Um, Some are very new. Uh, Some just met. They did their own inner work for about six months on their own, getting over their own divorces, and they were at a retreat. They'd known each other for six months, and we finally did this one exercise, and I, uh, the gentleman in the morning was just, Alana, I can't take it in. I, I just, it's so hard for me to be with all these people. Mm-hmm. And um, most of the time I do processes. I don't do a lot of somatic healing, like body work. That's not my, uh, my genius. But I just had this, um, this desire, this, this truth that he, because his mother 
had uh, actually chased him around the house with a knife when he was growing up. So he, he was really shut down. His heart was very shut down. And so I said, okay, this is weird. I don't normally do this. This is in front of everybody else at the retreat, but I, I feel like I really want to support you. And so he said, yes, I trust you. So I sat behind him just on this ottoman. So he's in front of me, sort of in between my legs. And I said, may I, may I put my hands on your heart? And he said, yes. And I said, just lean back into me. Let me be the divine mother. Let me be the mother you never had. And every exhale, just rest into my body more. And all of the people at the retreat, there were probably about 10 of us. And I said, slowly like the waves of the ocean, finish this sentence. The magnificence I see in you is. And then everybody slowly began to speak. And I said to the man in my arms, you get to choose if you let it in or not. You're in charge. And you can open or close. You're in charge. No, you know, you're, you're your own creator. And he slowly but surely began to sob in my arms and let in everyone's love. And the whole room was crying. And we literally witnessed someone coming home to their heart someone healing their heart, someone being willing to open to life and color returned to his cheeks. And then later, a few days later at the, at the retreat, the woman that he'd known for six months in all of the group coaching calls, they sat together doing what's called a dyad. It's a form of communication that I teach to deepen intimacy, trust, and respect. And they fell in love. Ooh. And it's been a year and they're still together, Whoa. stronger than ever. And it really, it tells me a few things. We have to show up to do the work and we have to surrender. And we have to trust that you're, when you're in a safe sanctuary and when you open and trust the divine healing love that's here for us all along, whether it's me as a leader or him as a participant or the other groups being present and going on that healing journey with him, our needs will be met. We must choose we must show up. We must do the work and then surrender and allow and receive. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful I get to do what I do. Yeah, yeah. I love those love stories. But especially I love them when they come after a healing process. It right. need healing process because if, though, if two broken hearts are getting together, <laughs> and they don't see it, you're going to have a broken relationship. Yes. So I, I love this, and I, I just want to repeat this. We have to show up to do the work and surrender. I wish we would have a word like surrender in Spanish because the meaning and the energy that it has in English, mm. it's not comparable to any other word in Spanish. Interesting. Surrender is a beautiful word. It's not giving up. It's just Letting go in trust. Yes. That yes. you did your part and that you are the divinity ready to create something else. Uh, I could stay here the whole day alone <laughs> talking about this because this is my, I love this topic. But we have to go. And before we go, I want you to share with us two steps or two tips for anyone to start their own healing process to attract and enhance the ideal partnership. Mm, mm, thank you. So the first practice, it's very simple, but you can do it every day and every night to bookend your day. I just want you to put one hand, like when you're lying in bed, put one hand on your heart. And I like to put one hand on my yoni, but you can put a hand on your, your belly, but just two hands on your body and simply say to your body and your being, hey, what if I not slowed down enough? to hear that you want me to know. And just listen. On a regular basis, if you do this, you will have a deeper intimate relationship with yourself. You will learn to welcome the feelings of joy and exuberance or the feelings of shame and sadness, and you will create a regular sanctuary for yourself. And as you deepen that internal relationship with yourself, you will deepen it with life, God, the universe, and you will be the vibration and emanation of that to attract a like partner, an ideal partner for you. So that would be one simple but profound daily practice for yourself. Mm -hmm. And the second is to let me love you. Come into my world. 
I don't understand how I got these superpowers, but my love for people literally comes through my videos. It comes through my writing. I have communities that say to me when I do little surveys with my email list, I, I've deleted everybody, but you and Deepak Chopra. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, thanks. They've been on my list for years. They look forward to my emails because I'm real. I'm vulnerable. I care. I share about my own wobbles and I don't hold back with my own magnificence and it somehow gives them permission to be themselves. So I'm the, I'm the mother, the sister, the, the friend that they may not have in their life who loves them unconditionally and believes in them eternally. So I invite you to come into my world and let me love you. Mm. So let's remind the listeners where they can go to find out more about you and they can let you love us. <laughs> love them. Thank you. Yeah. Well, ladies, um, alanapratt.com forward slash vulnerability is a way I can give you a gift of a seven part series about vulnerability being really that new, sexy, sacred, irresistible capacity. It's a strength, not a weakness. So that is a gift for ladies and for gentlemen. My site for men, gethertosayyes.com, has a wonderful complimentary training right there on the homepage called How to Be a Noble Badass, really being in your masculine grandeur, in I your heart. It. Yeah. <laughs> so those are two. Yes. <laughs> That's so cool, Alana. Yeah. So um, enjoy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alana Pratt, for sharing your healing superpower with us. It has been an amazing conversation, plenty of love and energy. And I want to honor you for your work and for who you are right here and right now. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, Angela Maria. Thank you so much for this conversation. You're, you're exquisite. And thank you, all of you, for joining us. I am Angela Maria, Conscious Creation. Change actions, shift energy to leave heaven down here on earth. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Are you ready to discover your superpowers? Go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz today.